Alright guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I just wanted to talk about the current state of Square Enix, JRPGs, and kind of the gaming industry as a whole. Uh, things have been rapidly changing in some ways for the better, in some ways for the worst. So, if you enjoyed JRPG, Dragon Quest, and Top 10 video content, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I think with your help, we might be able to pull it off. Anyways, I'll start off with the Square Enix situation. So, we've done several podcasts, uh, both with my buddy DG Online, the Relax Retro Talk podcast. We do it every, try to do it every month here on the YouTube channel. It's also on Spotify if you look it up. But we did an episode talking about the current state of Square Enix and what, what it's been looking like. But that was a couple months ago. Things have definitely changed in my opinion. Let's get into the current state of affairs. So a lot of people have been talking about Metaphor Refantasio or Refantasio. I don't know how you say it. Um, and a lot of people have been asking me in my chat, hey, Dookie, are you interested in this game at all? And honestly, yes, I'm very interested in it. But up until, like, I don't know, just this week, I haven't had a PS5, so I wasn't really looking at any, like, new PS5 or games that aren't basically on the Switch that are, like, new games. If they're not on the Switch or the PS4 or they don't run well on the PS4, I wasn't really that interested in them, you know what I mean? There's no point in, like, getting my hopes up to play a game when I probably wasn't going to be able to play it, but thanks to the Amazon Prime deals and all that stuff, I was able to get a PS5 on sale for a little bit cheaper than what they have been lately, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, it's yet to arrive as of the recording of this video, so I still haven't played it, but anyways, that is one of the big reasons why I wasn't super hyped or really talking about Metaphor Refantasio at all. Also the fact that I've never played an SMT or Persona game, mainly because I don't like mazes. I know that I've been told that SMT5 is more open, not so mazy. The Persona games, I heard that again, 5, Persona 5 isn't as mazy in its dungeons and stuff like that. So it's definitely a set of franchises and series that I would like to get to eventually. It's kind of like the social links, the, the dating sim aspects and stuff of the Persona series that I'm not like a big fan of. But I have been told that it's more like side quests in Metaphor Refantasio than straight up like dating same conversation stuff that was in like the persona series so i gotta look into it some more i might pick this game up at some point but i do have a lot of games on my backlog that i need to get to plus i'm still working on that dragon quest versus final fantasy series which gets me to the next thing dragon quest 3 he2d remake is coming out very soon november 14th so the reason I brought up Metaphor is because people are saying Square Enix is dead, blah, 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 because Persona and Atlas and Sega have taken over the RPG leadership role. And like, I don't have a problem with that. I am an old school Sega fan, the biggest Sega fan. Like for me, when it comes to like game developer companies and stuff like that, I think Sega is still probably at the top. Like it's Square Enix maybe, and then Sega are like here for me. I am so happy for Sega's like recent successes with like Atlas and stuff like that. Plus we have like all these new Sega kind of like throwback games on the horizon. Like they're making a Shinobi movie or something like that I heard. We're getting a new Crazy Taxi game. We're getting a new Jet Set Radio game. Like all this stuff is just incredible news to me. I'm not too sold on the new Streets of Rage because Streets of Rage 4 was fucking incredible. Like the best beat em up possibly of all time. Um, and the new one looks kind of just like generic. It's kind of like a 3D beat-em-up, which I've never been that big of a fan of. But anyways, the, the whole argument stems from the fact that Metaphor, at least at the time of this recording, is beating Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in the Metacritic ratings, okay? Like, I think Rebirth is like a 92 and Metaphor is like 94 or something like that. Now, I'm not one to like let ratings determine what games I want to play. There are plenty of like 6 out of 10 games that I love and it's just everybody has different personal tastes and preferences in what they like in a game and what they're looking for in a game, especially at specific moments in their life. Final Fantasy VII Remake is not a game that I was a fan of. I'm not the biggest Final Fantasy VII fan to begin with, and the changes they made to it were I just found were like absolutely ridiculous, and I don't know how the game sold. I don't know if it sold well or not. I think it sold like pretty well, 
but we never did get the sales figures for Rebirth. So despite the fact that it was rated quite highly, and I know a lot of my friends who even didn't like Remake have been praising Rebirth and, and saying it's like a huge step in the right direction. There's still some stupid changes in there, especially story-wise and character-wise, that they don't agree with and all that stuff. But overall, a lot of people that were even like, discarding remake are, are saying great things about rebirth the fact that they didn't release sales figures though is a huge sign that people were burnt by remake and when it comes to like sequels of a game you're always going to see kind of like depreciating sales the depreciating gains in rebirth i think is something that people are also commenting on to say that Square Enix is dead. Final Fantasy 16 didn't do so well, which I think is another reason people are saying Final Fantasy is dead. And it's really like, I don't know, Final Fantasy's not doing the greatest, but Square Enix I think is fine. And that's kind of the next thing I wanna get into here. Square Enix isn't just Final Fantasy. Square Enix has a ton of things going for it. They're publishing Fantasian Neo Dimension, which is coming up soon. I think it comes out in December. I'm highly anticipating that one. That's like one of my must buy games of the year. Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, of course, comes out in November. Another game that I'm guaranteeing to be buying. There's some games that look great, honestly. I'm not a big fan of, for example, the Saga series. I absolutely despise the Saga series. But this remake of Romancing Saga 2 looks incredible. It looks like they've made it a lot more approachable. It doesn't look like the past Saga games where you're just kind of thrown in there and you're pretty much fucked if you don't go the way that you should have gone, but there's nothing indicating in the game where you should have gone. It looks like this game has been streamlined and they fixed the issues that most of us have with the Saga series. I'm not going to guarantee that. I haven't played the game, but I'm just going off of like the trailers and and what people have been saying about the new Saga game. So they've got that coming. They've got, of course, the game I'm even more looking forward to, Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD 2D Remake. I'm more so excited for 1 and 2 because there's a lot of potential to what they can do to the game itself. Dragon Quest 1 and 2 are kind of, especially Dragon Quest 1, is like a very small game. The NES version of the game takes me about 20 to 24 hours to beat. The Super Famicom remake, where they streamlined it and didn't make it as grindy and stuff like that, made it a little bit more user-friendly, is about five to nine hours max. That's a short game. There's a lot of extra content that they can stuff into these games. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. I'm highly anticipating the Dragon Quest 1 and 2 remake, more so even than Dragon Quest 3 remake. There's also Visions of Mana, which came out recently. I know I did a review of the PS4 demo and it ran like absolute dog shit, which is another reason why I bought a PS5. Because guess what? I want to play Visions of Mana real bad. It looks so good, man. I can't wait to play that. There's just... Square Enix isn't dying, man. It's just Final Fantasy has lost its way. Final Fantasy's kind of been like that for quite some time now. It shouldn't be surprising. But Final Fantasy XIV is still doing fantastic. I heard that the latest expansion isn't doing as well as the previous one. But that's okay. There's still a ton of people playing Final Fantasy XIV. Hell, there's a ton of people playing Dragon Quest X to this very day. Version 7.2 comes out very soon. There's constant content updates when it comes to both Final Fantasy XIV and Dragon Quest X. Like, Square Enix is not going away. They're doing great. It's just the Final Fantasy series has kind of lost its way. It needs to course correct, and I think they're taking the steps to put it in the right path. Even though I don't like the combat system in Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth and stuff like that, there are a ton of people who do. And it's not the combat that was turning them away, it's like the changes to the story and stuff like that. The padding. Stuff that's like just making the game longer for the sake of making the game longer. The stupid dimension dimensional ghost things that don't belong in Final Fantasy 7 whatsoever. Not only is it adding wasted time, ruining the story for some people, it's also adding a ton of work, which means a ton of money for the developers, because they're having to come up with new ideas and stuff when they could have just stuck to the original story and remade it, which is kind of what everybody wanted in the first place. Speaking of remakes, there's still talks that Final Fantasy 9 is getting a remake. Now, will it be good? I don't know, because there's been tons of talk that it's been delayed and kind of been in development hell lately. But I'm looking forward to at least hearing something about it. 
On the horizon, we've got, of course, Dragon Quest 12. We haven't really seen much from it. I think we will see something next year after Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD 2D Remake come out. I don't think they want to, like, overshadow it or anything like that. So I think next summer or shortly after Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD 2D Remake comes out, I think that's when we're going to see some Dragon Quest 12 stuff. So I'm super hyped about that. Again, I'm not concerned about Square Enix in the least. Triangle Strategy did incredibly well for how low budget of a game it is. I'm not worried about Square Enix at all anymore. In all honesty, they're bouncing back. They're using all their other franchises outside of Final Fantasy to put some quality games out there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little commentary on the current state of gaming and the current state of JRPGs. We got a ton of great JRPGs lately, a lot of them turn-based. I don't know why Final Fantasy left turn-based, a lot of the Sega Atlas games have been turn-based, like the newer Yakuza games and the Persona games and Metaphor Re Fantasio have all been excellent turn-based games that are rating quite highly. There was a time not too long ago, maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, where people were saying turn-based is dead. Well, guess what? That's not the case. It never will be. It's just a combat style, man. It's just like saying 2D platformers are dead. It's never gonna die. As long as it's properly implemented and it's fun, people are gonna enjoy it. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.